you. Uh, welcome to the April 29th uh, meeting of the Public Works Infrastructure Committee. We have a pretty full agenda today. We have uh, funded one item that was on the previously uh, published agenda uh, dealing with sanitary sewer hookups, and we'll reserve that for the next next meeting. Um, Councilman Lesser, I believe, is now on. Fantastic. So let's uh, introduce the committee. My name's Neil Dobler, District 7. Tony Emerson, District 4. Mike Lesser, District 9. Great. And we do have uh, Councilman Duncan in attendance, and I believe Councilman Padilla, excuse me, Deputy Mayor Padilla. I appreciate having them there uh, here today as well. First item of business is approval of the March 15th, 2021 meeting minute, minutes uh, for a motion. Move approval. Looks like a second. Second. <laughs> second. All right. We have a uh, motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Would uh, like to take a few minutes to introduce our new uh, public works director. James Jackson, we are happy to have you here, sir. Would you just take a couple minutes and talk about your background? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Well, the light's on green, so I mean that. I, okay, we're good. Um, glad to be on board. I've uh, been here about uh, four weeks now. Um, been drinking out of a fire hose, so uh, <laughs> it's, it's been pretty exciting. Uh, having uh, already dealing with uh, the teams, uh, which I enjoy doing. I uh, come to you guys from Atlanta, Georgia, um, responsible for the public works operations there. Uh, interestingly enough, though, we just separated transportation from the public works organization there in Atlanta. Uh, but prior to that, I was in D.C., um, where I served as a deputy director of operations uh, for the public works department. Um, and uh, have been in Detroit, Wayne County, Richmond, uh, Grand Rapids, Organizations ranging in size from 110 people up to about 1,700 budgets, uh, 60 million up to about 2.1 billion. So I'm familiar with the entire lay of the land as it refers to public works. You name it, we've done it. Uh, thrown trash, filled potholes, <laughs> actually been out on projects. I'm not going to get on the back of a truck anymore. <laughs> um, the standing joke here for me now is I can get to Cold Stone Creamery in four minutes here. <laughs> <laughs> so I really enjoyed it. <laughs> you, you mentioned Cold Stone Creamery in Atlanta, and it takes you an hour just to commute to get there and get back home. So my wife and I are really loving it. And I think I shared with everyone that uh, my wife's family is actually from here. Uh, so mm -hmm. this is uh, a homecoming in a sense. Uh, her mom's 84 years old, and uh, we needed to get back here to take care of her. So, um, you know, I had an opportunity to talk to the city manager uh, with whom I immediately established a rapport. Um, I like the city manager. I like the way he operates. And uh, since I've been on board, uh, he's shown me nothing less. And I am very impressed with the staff that I have. So I'm looking forward to uh, making this my home. Very good. Appreciate that introduction. Welcome. And uh, it's going to be great to uh, have you on board with uh, that breadth of experience. All right. Uh, have you uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. Councilman Lesser. I, I just I just wanted to welcome him welcome him as well. He's already got his feet wet on one project with me, and he's still talking to me. So um, <laughs> that, 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 that that is a positive. Um, I uh, I I do want to say uh, absolute breath of fresh air. Um, uh, his demeanor on the project and and and, and handling a, a difficult situation we worked on, which was our first. Um, you know, so far I've been really impressed with him and, and just seems like a really good guy. For the record, if everybody there, I have given him and he's not yet taken taking me up on my recommendation of G's Cheesecake, locally owned cheesecake, locally owned restaurant of how good it is. You might want to give him his two cents, uh, your two cents of uh, uh, making sure that he stops by there because I told him uh, I bragged him up. So anyway, welcome aboard. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you Councilman. No, just, just welcome. And you won't be talking to him for long, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Well, let's uh, get right into it. Uh, item four is a 2021 project update, and I usually look to the public works director to address that with the appropriate staff. Okay, sir. Um, and we'll jump right into it. Um, 
city engineer and I have had opportunity to review them. So uh, let's start off with, um, do we have the information? Okay. Um, project one. Hey, sir, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, project one, uh, Southwest 10th and Wanamaker. Ah, yes, Council Member Lesser. Uh, we, <laughs> we had an opportunity to meet at the location. Uh, projects uh, moving along. Um, we, um, uh, the access road uh, is uh, completed. Um, all of the uh, utilities have been moved. Uh, the stormwater structures and pipe have, has been installed. Um, the grade uh, work is in progress. We have an anticipated uh, completion date of uh, November 19th, 2021. Uh, do have a couple of other items that uh, we're working with the council member on in terms of the grade uh, with uh, a couple of the finished areas, but we don't see anything else holding up the project. Fantastic. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, this is Southwest 12th, Kansas to Washburn. Uh, the water lines and storm sewer work has been completed. Uh, east of Topeka Boulevard, um, the work uh, continues over at Polk Street and will jump to Washburn intersection next. Uh, storm water uh, or the storm sewer work will follow. Um, the street sections removed from Kansas to uh, Western and we expect a completion date there um, to Washburn Avenue by November uh, 23rd. Next project, uh, North Kansas Avenue, Morris to Solder. Uh, currently, the contractor is replacing the water main uh, from Morris to, Morris to uh, St. John. The west leg of Kansas and Morris intersection is closed. Um, the project uh, also includes some storm sewer and sidewalk replacement, and this construction project maintains uh, two-way traffic. Um, while one side is being done, the other side is actually open, and then we'll jump to the other side. Uh, the completion date is anticipated for December 2nd. Southwest 8th Street. Uh, this is uh, one of those where we're, the limits are from Summit Avenue to Topeka Boulevard. Um, and we have a total of about uh, sidewalk improvements um, of the, wait, that says sidewalk improvements are on element of the Complete Streets Program that makes uh, transportation access available to all users despite physical conditions. That includes ADA. Uh, it also includes ADA uh, compliance, and we expect that to be completed by May 14th. Southeast Deer Creek, uh, what's that, traffic way? <laughs> okay, I-70 to uh, Southeast 6th Avenue. Currently, the contractor is milling and doing full-depth concrete patching on the northbound lanes. Uh, the southbound lanes are still open for two-way traffic. Once they finish uh, the northbound lanes, they'll jump over to the southbound side. So uh, we ex expect uh, completion there about uh, July 16th or thereabouts. Okay, the next one, uh, Central Park Neighborhood Sort. Uh, we're constructing about 37,826 square feet of sidewalk or roughly about 7.2 miles. Uh, we're going to repave five alleys, replace the sewer mains under some sections of the new alleys, and the work being done in the areas is bordered by uh, Polk and Central Park Avenue on the Polk Street on the west or, or east, Central Park Avenue on the west, and Huntoon Street on the north and 16th Street on the south. And the second area is bounded by Southwest Polk Street on the east, uh, Southwest Buchanan Street on the west, and 16th on the north and 17th Street on the south. And the completion dates anticipated for October 29th. Next project, please, ma'am. Okay, North Kansas Avenue. Here we've had a full depth asphalt pavement reconstruction uh, with sidewalk and ADA. Uh, ramp replacements, uh, storm sewer and water line replacement. Um, work continues and the utility work under the rail has been completed. Next project, okay. And now uh, we're, we're going to look at uh, the projects that are currently under design. And um, don't know if you have a copy of that to review. Do you have we any do. questions of that, sir? Yeah, I guess just ask the uh, committee to take a look at that, and if there's any questions, uh, we can ask those at this point. I don't have any questions. Councilman? No, okay. None. Councilman Lesser? I do not. Thank you.
you. Okay. Very good. A lot going on. Positive, yes, uh, positive uh, things happening in the city. Let's move to uh, number five, median improvement program update. I'm going to provide an update on some work that we're looking at on some medians around town. Let me get to the beginning here. No problem. There we go. Um, okay, you can go to the go to the next slide. So um, we have some kind of a new program to address uh, the condition of a lot of the medians around town. I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, you know, we have had some recently reconstructed and some that haven't been touched in a long time. Um, a lot of them have been. Uh, had a chip seal uh, placed over the over the cap. Some of those are, are flaking off and failing. Um, and there's some just in general disrepair. So we intend to address uh, the condition of the medians. And, and in addition to that, there may be some that aren't necessarily needed anymore that we can look at removing. Uh, so we'll get those as well um, with this. Next slide. So this is um, funded through the general obligation bonds. In the adopted CIP, we had a little, about 80,000 identified funding for this year. And then we had 300,000 in uh, 23 and 24. In the proposed CIP, that got advanced up to next year. Um, we can make that work, but that doesn't obviously give us as much time to for planning and design uh, for the work, but uh, we can still make that work. The uh, next slide. So kind of where we're at, uh, we've identified approximately 178 medians around town, plus or minus. I, I wouldn't guarantee that's a complete list. Um, it doesn't, does not include any roundabouts. Um, these are all primarily on arterials and collector streets, so it doesn't include any medians that might be back inside neighborhoods, things like that. Um, at this point, we are removing seven uh, individual medians as part of different projects this year, and, and I'll go over those here in a minute. I have identified 63 of these that are uh, basically included or, or could be included in the proposed uh, CIP projects. So the, for the purpose of, of this program, we're not gonna address those, if, if those can be addressed with the CIP projects. That way we can focus more on um, other meetings that, that otherwise wouldn't get any work done on them. Uh, we've had 19 uh, meetings reconstructed within the last four to five years. Um, so those should, for most part, are, you know, don't need any type of work. Um, so that leaves about 99 left, and out of those 99, um, you know, about half of those are, aside from general maintenance uh, um, oper operations, we don't really need to do any substantial work. So that leaves about 44 individual medians that we can consider for different types of improvements under this program. These uh, next couple pictures may be a little graphic, so feel free to look away if you can't handle it. <laughs> this kind of illustrate, um, uh, you know, the reason why we're spending money on medians. Um, so the ones that, like I mentioned, we're removing seven this year. Four of those are in conjunction with the 12th Street reconstruction project. Um, those have already been removed. They're not going back in. Um, at 42nd and Topeka Boulevard, there's a signal replacement project. As part of that project, they're going to remove that median. It's not uh, serving a, a function out there, really. Um, next one, at 29th in Kansas, we have a project this summer to replace uh, about 100 feet of pavement 
uh, that section of pavement. In conjunction with that, uh, we're removing the entire median uh, and not replacing it, so it'll just go back with, with striping. And then on the 6th and Branner intersection, um, the plan is to remove the median on the west leg and then the medians on the, as I understand, the medians on the south and east legs will be reconstructed basically in their current configuration. Um, there may also be some ADA improvements um, in conjunction with that project. So this slide here shows, I mentioned we have about 44 medians identified to consider for improvements and that shows you 44 yellow dots on the sh on the page shows you where those are located at. Um, I don't intend to necessarily go through every one of them. You should have, um, hopefully in your packet, there was also included a list, a kind of spreadsheet list of all the medians. The ones in yellow on, on the screen correspond with the yellow section at the top of the list. That gives you more information on the location, um, the, the condition of, of those medians. So some of the options we're looking at for, for work on these can range from uh, you know, repairing broken sections of curb or, or median noses, replacing the, the paved median cap if the curb is otherwise in good condition. We can look at short, shortening some medians um, if, if it's appropriate or modifying the shape. Some um, may have like a, sorry, like a bulb out. Um, if we remove that and make it straight, it can leave more room for left turn storage, things like that. And then we can just replace the median um, basically in kind as it is today. And uh, like I mentioned, we're also looking at removing meetings that no longer serve a, a function. And so the next steps uh, we're looking at is to prioritize those 44 or so medians um, in the kind of high, medium, low priority and determine what sort of improvements need to be made so we can optimize the full $680,000 in funding. Um, we'll need to look at uh, at this point, probably um, getting some additional consultant help for design for the work. And then uh, we can also look at identifying any other improvements we'd like to do in conjunction, you know, if, whether it's replacing some ad adjacent pavement panels or, or making ADA improvements at, you know, at the intersections. So we'll have to identify those improvements and, and additional funding to cover those. And with that, uh, I'm open for any questions or comments. Any uh, questions for the committee? Emerson. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Bidwell, thank you for your presentation. Um, and I, I do. I have several questions, and I guess the first thing is, what is the purpose of medians? Why were these constructed in the first place? Um, I. I can go over a couple questions. I'll, I'll maybe invite Christy if she has any additional comments to chime in. <laughs> but uh, a lot of the, the main ones at the intersections, uh, a big function of them is for access control. If, if a driveway is too close to the intersection, we don't want to uh, allow certain movements, left turns or so, that might okay. impact traffic in the intersection. Um, they can also provide um, a little refuge for pedestrian crossings. Um, anything else you'd like to add to that, Christy? Well, I well, I I, I did some asking around too because there's a lot of them that don't serve either of those purposes, and uh, there there was a um, an idea that uh, turning vehicles would crash more often if those medians weren't in place, and so a lot of intersections just have medians to separate the, uh, the traffic waste, but um, I don't think that's a, an unnecessary purpose really, so. 
Okay, thank you. I, I guess then how do we decide then whether or not to replace? I know you mentioned at 6th and Branner, um, maybe you wouldn't replace the West one, but you would the other two, but like at 29th in, in Kansas, you wouldn't replace that. And I, you know, 29th in Kansas probably gets more traffic, I would think. But um, how, how do you decide? Well, whether, at whether 20th in Kansas, we determine the, there's a driveway going into that business on the, on the northeast corner. Mm -hmm. That driveway distance is far enough from the intersection that uh, median isn't necessarily warranted at that location. So is the policy going forward wherever you can eliminate a uh, median? Would that be a fair statement or? We're, we're, I think the first thing would be we're looking at it. Um, it's a obviously a case by case basis. Um, you know, I'll work with Christy to determine if if a median is warranted or or um, if it's needed. Like I said, it's not just for there may be you know pedestrian or um, issue um, considerations also, not just not just traffic or or access issues. If I just one more, you bet. Thank you. Uh, as you probably know, a couple, maybe this was just last week, um, a lot of us went out and we did a cleanup on South Topeka Boulevard. And one, one of the things that I did was sweeping off those medians. And what really shocked me was the amount of stuff, like trash in those medians, because uh, you know, Mr. Trower and his crews can't get there really to maintain them. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, there were, there were brake pads. There were, um, like, leaf springs from cars up there. There were... Um, pieces of like cars where they, they hit or something and they were they're laying up in that median and just what a just the accumulation of all that debris just was really unsightly, you know, in addition to the you know the surfacing stuff or weeds. But I just I, I guess if there's not a need, I would always be, I guess, in uh, favor of eliminating where you don't need them. Right. We're certainly looking at that. In, in that uh, Topeka Boulevard corridor, for instance, you know, between 29th to 37th, I mean, there's a lot of business entrances and so you know the more access points you have the you know you have a greater <laughs> chance for you know accidents and that sort of thing so those medians you know do serve a purpose for controlling the or limiting the number of turning movements available thank you councilman lesser any questions yeah can you give give me a little bit of an understanding of uh are we are we contracting this out? Um, are we doing some of the work in house? Can you kind of let me give me a little bit of give give us a little bit of a rundown on how that's going to uh, take place? Is your question in in reference to the construction work? The construction and repair work, yes. Yeah, this would all be contracted out at this point. What about design? The design part, part for design. Um, I don't believe there's any in the six hundred eighty thousand. I don't think there's any um, identified for or earmarked for design in the proposed CIP. But at this point, given the the change in the in the funding years, we would probably, we're looking at going out for some design consultant design work for for it. Um, tell me, tell me how this is going out to the. Con I mean, are we putting this out for bid, or are we expecting? I mean, are we expecting that one's under a certain amount? Um, I, I want some more detail on exactly how this is going to be put out, as far as from a competitive standpoint, as far as from a uh, uh, if we have a list of contractors that 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 are approved, we're going to rotate. I'd like a little more additional information on how that's going to work. Um, at this point, I, I imagine we'd just follow the normal procedure of putting it out for bid. Um, whether that's, we haven't determined whether it's going to be one, one big package or, or you know, several smaller uh, um, you know, construction packages. We haven't determined that yet. Maybe chair, maybe you're more experienced in this area. I'm, I'm not. Maybe you can get the answer I'm kind of looking for. I'm not obviously articulating what I'm what I'm trying to accomplish here. Yeah, let me see if I I think I've had probably the same question. Six hundred eighty thousand is not going to go a long ways. And the 
the more efficient we can be with that, I, you know, if, if obviously my my business is consulting, but it'd be great if in-house forces could do a, do more of it and, and put more money on the street. I guess is a better way. And if there's some kind of con, whether it's packaging enough together that the, the, the prices go down a little bit, or um, maybe some in-house work. It'd be good to spread that out as far as possible. Is that kind of where you were headed, Mike? Yeah, I, I mean, we got a six hundred eighty thousand dollars. You know, we don't have a what we're looking at. We don't have a plan of what we're looking at as a design, how that's going to do. I mean, I'm just looking kind of for a budget of what we're looking at, how much is going to be done in house. Are we going to kind of put these out on a per project competitive bid basis? We're going to put it out on a in totality bid basis. Are we going to try to take advantage of economy of scale with the different contractors that we have, uh, you know, bid process that we have? Um, I, I, I'm not, I don't want this to be raggedy tag. And I, 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 want, to, I want to know what the plan is, and I'm not hearing a plan. You'll have a plan. We'll, yes, or, yeah. yes it's, we haven't got to that level of detail, but when we do have a plan, we can, we can bring it back and, and give you another update on that. Appreciate that. that. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you. Councilman Emerson. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, kind of to maybe to piggyback on that a little bit, Mr. Bidwell. I know you said 80000 this year and you had seven, but did I hear you say those seven are actually, I know, the, I know the four that are on 12th Street will be under that project, but are most of those paid for under other programs? Is that is that the thing? Um, I believe the 6th and Branner. 6th and Branner. Six and Branner is under the curb and gutter program. Or the uh, median replacement program. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, Six and okay. Branner is the only one currently. And it's just got through being designed and it should be out on the street by the end of May. So that's the only one that's actually paid for. That's what the 80000 is then. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. It was uh, consulted and it will be out on the street for anyone to bid. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schreiner. All right. Um, thanks, Robert. I, I mean, of, of all the things that we see every day that make a difference in what our city looks like, medians is one of those things, partially because you get stopped there at, uh, mm -hmm. at, a, at a traffic <laughs> signal and uh, get a chance to look at the condition of the median. So I think that's a great, uh, great project. Appreciate that. Uh, let's move on to number six, uh, capital work program. Aesthetic based capital work program. Thank you. So, this is the first time that we used uh, aesthetic program for our, uh, for the development of the capital works uh, program, and uh, today I will be discussing how. Uh, we concluded with the, the first ever uh, capital works program for the next 100 years. Uh, so uh, today's uh, agenda is uh, for the presentation. First, I will just briefly describe the infrastructure planning process and as part of the process, uh, how we are doing our street identification uh, in, at, the, at the moment and how we are moving forward with the, with the software aesthetic. Uh, towards the end, uh, we have uh, ran three budget scenarios and uh, to see uh, if we change the budget level, so how our overall network changes. And uh, toward the end, uh, I have just a summary of one year capital works program, so you can see it uh, towards the end. Uh, whether it is a manual uh, program or uh, aesthetic base. Initially, it starts with uh, updating inventory after the completion of every project. We uh, update our inventory our, in, in our GIS system. And that is, that whole process is just a summary. So for every box, almost, we have created a very uh, extensive SOP for utilities and public works department. So once the inventory is updated in the GIS, so the second step is to conduct the condition assessment 
Uh, for bridges, we are doing this on a two-year basis. For streets, we are doing this on a three-year basis. And once that is done, again, the system is updated. And the, once the systems are updated, uh, the citywide and GIS system, then from there, both the process uh, divide. So we get those updated maps from the systems and use uh, manual approach to identify maintenance and rehabilitation projects. And then when the aesthetic model, we export that information to the aesthetic and we calibrate the model for unit casts, for uh, maintenance strategies, for decision trees and all that stuff. And once that is done, then we run different type of uh, strategies, budget strategies, and then we generate uh, a number of reports. Uh, so it could be a surface profile report, a condition assessment report, and capital works program. So as part of this presentation, I will be discussing the surface profile uh, report and the capital works program. Once the report is finalized, then towards the end, it is handed over to the team for, uh, for validation. And if they have some comments, then uh, we update the model accordingly. So there's the whole process for the, uh, uh, for the manual and the, the aesthetic base. Next slide. So in the manual approach, in the manual approach, the condition maps are, uh, are generated from the GIS system with updated PCI values. And within those ranges, then the team manually picks up uh, winter maintenance and rehabilitation and reconstruction uh, projects. Uh, as part of the decision making, uh, input from the street operations uh, department is taken. And if they have uh, identified some projects, so they include that in the decision-making process. Next, in the aesthetic, uh, first we calibrate the model with, uh, with those uh, strategies. So this table shows the strategies we developed for, uh, for asphalt streets and similar strategies developed for concrete roads and brick uh, uh, streets. So as part of the strategy, we have uh, preventive maintenance, then a rehabilitation and reconstruction strategies. So when the PCI value is within 86 and 100, so no treatment is done, so road is in very good condition. Preventive maintenance stuff is done, like surface seal is done when the PCI value is from 71 to 85. And rehabilitation is done from 41 to 70 uh, through two different uh, surface treatments, surface seal and patch and melon overlay. And if you see on the melon overlay in, on major rehabilitation, so 41 to 55 is used for melon overlay on collector and arterials. And the, the range increases to 31, from 31 to 55 is used for melon overlay on, on, on collector roads. And Below that, like below 40 to zero is we are reconstructing. And it's like below 30 to zero we are reconstructing on local streets. This is the overall uh, treatment strategy we developed for uh, asphalt, concrete, and brick. So on the top, if you see on asphalt road, over the life cycle of the asphalt streets, we do after construction, we do a surface seal, then surface seal and patch, melon overlay, then a second surface seal, then surface seal and patch, and then reconstruct. For the concrete roads, over the life cycle, we do first the joint repairs, then panel repair, then asphalt overlay with edge milling, and then after that we treat that road as a as an asphalt road, and then we do surface seal, surface seal and patch, and then reconstruct. For the brick roads, for the life cycle of brick roads, we do first brick paging one, then brick page two, then brick page three, and then towards the end we do reconstruction. 
those brick streets with already uh, uh, asphalt is laid on that, we treat that as part of the model as an asphalt road. So this whole treatment strategies are defined in the model. And then based on that, then we run our analysis. So we, we, we ran three analysis, uh, uh, scenario analysis. So in one, we, we use unlimited budget. And uh, so there's, there's a good way of uh, seeing the, the, the model, like it takes up all the, uh, the treatments we used. And I will show you like how the surface profile varies with the, uh, with the unlimited budget. The next scenario is the $24 million uh, budget. So this is the team uh, decided our, by the time that from all sources, uh, we have an average of, from the four sources, we have an average cost uh, fund of $24 million from sales tax, uh, countywide, uh, citywide, and federal funds, and plus the geo bonds. The other scenario, 10 million, was uh, picked up uh, with the assumption that uh, in 2019, the council has to approve uh, the citywide sale tax, which is approximately 13 to 14 million dollars. So then uh, an idea came like, okay, if we don't have that fund, and if we have only 10 million dollar fund, so what best we can do in the 10 million dollars? So those three million, uh, those three scenarios reign in the model, uh, but so far we have not included uh, inflation. This is the first run, and it says a lot of stuff and comments are coming. So we are, uh, we will be modifying that, and we will be including that in the next run in, in inflation. So this is the surface profile. If you see on the horizontal, it's the year. So year starts from one, which is 2019, and uh, it goes all the way till 100 years. And on the vertical scale, it's a PCI. So at present, the PCI is at 65, which is the average PCI level uh, we uh, got from the 2019 uh, survey. And in the first two years, we need almost, as per the unlimited budget scenario, we need around $229 million. And it will pick up the PCI to around 90, and then it slightly, as per the deterioration uh, models built into the system, it just slightly degrades. And somewhere around 41, we have uh, I, I think, so uh, we need a major reconstruction on 41 and then on 71 years. So if you see all the way, the, the, the surface profile is ranging from, from 60 to 80 in this range. So this is pretty uh, steady curve. Next is the $25 million, uh, this is the $24 million curve. So at present it is uh, 60, it's uh, 65. And for the next 31 years, our PCI ranges from 70 to 77. And then uh, from then onwards, the, the PCI level drops. So till 30 years, we are good with that budget. Next is the 10 years. So on 10 years, if you see right from the start, we are degrading, our, our whole surface profile degrades all the way. So uh, I think so for the uh, first 23 years, uh, our PCI ranges from 60 to 65, and then from uh, after that, 23 years, the surface profile, uh, the surface profile degrades uh, abruptly. Next is the, so once that, th this one of the report we could generate through the, uh, uh, through different, so you can see different funding service levels with different costs. This is the summary sheet, so this is just in an example I have taken from year one. So uh, once you run the model and then you generate for a specific scenario, which is $24 million, so on year by year, we get this summary. So this summary gives you information like in year one of your whole life cycle, 
what treatment strategies and what segments you will do. So this is just the summary. This, this is an example. And if you see within each of those treatments, for example, melanin overlay spot, melanin overlay, so what are the projects and segments included in that? Uh, so you can you you, you can have those uh, as well. So on the next slide, uh, the concrete panel replacement. So those are the segments uh, identified in year one for concrete panel replacements. The our all model is based on square yards. So all unit rates are in square yards. So our network measure are whatever the output we can generate. It is in square yards. So in this way, like this is just in an example, and uh, once that is done, so then we hand over this uh, uh, Capital Works program to the engineering team, and uh, then they, uh, the next slide is, uh, then they validate with the field, like whether the output from the software is okay, if not, then we tweak the model and uh, incorporate their comments. Towards the end uh, is visualization. So the team wants to see the, the each scenario in the GIS so we can do that. And even year by year they want to see in the GIS so that we can do it. So the functionality is there. But we have not yet been successful in, uh, op in operationalizing that function because uh, there is some issues. So we are in communication with the DUT solutions. So hopefully like we will be able to, uh, to visualize each scenario in the GIS and then each year capital works program in the GIS. So this is uh, that's a brief on the capital works program and if you have any questions that's, that's it. Those were the all right, thank you. Uh, questions from the committee? Lots. Lots, yeah. Uh, Councilman Emerson. Uh, th thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, I guess, first of all, I think maybe this is a question for the city manager. Can we do without police and fire for the next few years? <laughs> uh, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, that's that's all the answer I needed. Okay. Sorry, did I take too long to think about no, that? No, no. <laughs> that I would be a little concerned if I were the chiefs there. Yeah, uh, yeah. So obviously, the unlimited budget is not going to happen. Uh, I wasn't certain though on your twenty-four million. If you don't have inflation in there, why would it go down over time? Because aren't you continuing to spend twenty-four million a year? Uh, I mean, is it the degradation of our roads is happening faster than you can fix them? Is that yes, yes, because. There is another, uh, that's a very great question. And uh, the issue with that question is that uh, they don't give me information on what's the actual logic behind the whole degradation. The, we, de uh, we, de uh, we define the degradation profile, but how ferns are distributed amongst different treatments, they don't give me that information. So, but to, to your question, yes, it degrades with time and because uh, at different level, different uh, projects, uh, different segments have reconstruction or rehabilitation needs and that's why it degrades. Like for some time it goes well, but after that it, it degrades with that fund. So even at 24 million a year forever, we won't stay up with our streets? No, the, the, what, the graph, what the graph says is till 31 years. We are good. We are somewhere within 70 to 75 to 77 range. But after that, it we degrade. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And council member, if I may, Sir. part of that has to do with the fact that uh, the road has its own anatomy, hmm. and over time, the varying levels from the wearing, the, the top course, the wearing, the sub base, and the base, all of those are actually going through their own forms of deterioration. Yes. So as we get to the point, we can continue to replace or mill and overlay the wearing coat and or, or the top coat, but we're eventually going to have to go and do a full depth reclamation uh, in order to re-fortify the particular road segment. And if we don't do that, yes, it's going to continue. Uh, okay, thank you for that. Um, 
what, I think just one more question right now, Chair. Uh, thank you. The, the last thing, when you showed the concrete panel replacement, I didn't understand, I guess, I think you said you're using square yards on that, and I have the first thing is like asset ID, it says 2005. I don't know if you can put that up or well. It's well, this page with your little with the spreadsheet on there. And it says Southwest 11th Street, and it says 823.34, I guess that's square yards. Is that? You're looking under assets. Yeah, yeah. This yes, right yes, there. Yes. Yeah, so I don't, can yes. you explain, I guess, um, what's the network measure? What, what is that unit? And then what is the associated cost? Yeah, the network measure is in square yards, so 800, let me just open it. So this is uh, 823.34 is the square yard and that segment. So that gives you, that, that, that measures is the total uh, area of that particular segment, the uh, item number one, which is 2300 to uh, 2317. Now as part of the model, what the team decided is as part of this whole area, we will just hit only 15% of that, that segment. So 15% of that area multiplied by the unit rate will give you that cost. Okay, so you're, you're not replacing 823 square No, 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 yeah. You're saying that's what the total area is, and of that 15%? Yes, that's, that's how we fixed. marked it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilman Lesser, any questions? Do not at this time. Thanks. I just got a couple, and thanks for the presentation. I appreciate the approach. Um, looking at the scenario, the $24 million, that includes, so half cent sales tax citywide is $14 million or so. The other 10 comes from general fund expenditures and bonding. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, how do you distribute that? Because uh, once you get into the reconstruction of the streets, that's that takes a pretty big chunk out. And I guess just looking at the, the $24 million scenario, um, I, I'm just, I guess my question is, how do you accurately, the, let, let me start back with the average PCI is an average because you've got some new streets that are at 95 and you've got some horrible streets that are at 20. How, how do you continue to address the really horrible streets uh, while maintaining other other streets uh, through mill and overlay or or uh, sealing procedures or whatever. I mean, theoretically, this all makes sense, but in practicality, how does that really work? Because you probably got that. In order to bring the PCIs of 20 up to that average right now, there's probably a lot more than 20, $24 million, right? So. Yes. So what happened was that uh, for the first uh, for the first run, the department engineering department gave us uh, a list of already identified projects in the CIP. So through the force you uh, force rules, there is one functionality in the in the software. So for instance, if some work has already been done in that year. Mm -hmm. So, so that the software should understand that okay, what work has already been done? Some streets are new, but other streets are already like in the in the in, in one year before. For instance, if a surface seal is done, so the computer doesn't understand. So that is we are entering that through uh, uh, an, an Excel workbook. So with that, we we develop that sheet, and as part of that, through the force rule. We just overrides whatever we have defined within the within the within the software. So that that's addressed to the force rule uh, functionality. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask a question another way. How, how do you how do you take this from a theoretic theoretical model to reality? Because at some point somebody's got to put the asphalt on the street in the right place. Right. How does that happen? Just got on board, sir, but I'm yeah. um, Part of what's going to happen is I'll make a recommendation uh, to the city manager based on the premise of keeping our good streets as good as we can, which means we will spend less money on the streets that are in good condition and we'll have more of it to go around for the, the crack ceiling, the slurry ceiling. 
those streets that are falling into poor or fair or poor condition, we will begin looking at based on their functional indexes. In other words, arterials, collectors, uh, residentials, and what their PCI value is and making um, recommendations there uh, to Jihan's point regarding uh, the mill and overlaying or the, uh, we can do a, a, some in some instances we can do a, not a full def reclamation, but a reclamation where we actually go in and mill and overlay where we actually patch uh, the base, which gives us uh, some structural uh, support and we will make recommendations along those lines as well so that we can hit as many of those streets and bring them up as well. And we understand it's going to be some horse trading. Um, you know, it's going to go across the city because the PCI values are, are, are there for the entire city, but we're going to be making those decisions based on the, the worst condition of those that have fallen below good, and we'll be making that recommendation to the city manager. Okay. I, I appreciate that. Um, how long is our half cent sales tax mark for the the current one, the citywide? Do you recall, or maybe city manager? It was a ten year renewals. It was and a ten year renewal, so it started the new one started in twenty one. Twenty one, and okay, so, so two thousand thirty one would. Be, so we're the first year of the yeah. Renewal. We're in the first okay. year of the new one. Um, and we had a ten ten year stretch before that. I think just just my perception. Um, and I think any anybody on on this committee probably can verify the number one complaint we get is streets potholes, especially this time of year after after a pretty hard winter, a lot of freeze thaw. Um, I know it's better than it was ten years ago, but sometimes it doesn't feel like it, I and I think that's a perception that that a lot of people have. Um, nine years is a long time, but. Somewhere in about six or seven years, the city is going to have to think about renewing that half cent sales tax. And I think it's important that it passes as overwhelmingly as it did the last time, mm -hmm. which I think was over 70% positive. But there's a lot of work to do, obviously, between now and then. So. Yeah, and, and when a street gets mill and overlaid, then it, we do climb it back up the curve and reevaluate another PCI index to it. Right. Understand that, so we'll be interested to see what the what the program that comes out of this looks like uh, in the future. Anything else, Councilman? Yeah, just one last thing, Chair. Thank you. Um, how often do we update the PCI, like on an overall basis? I know, I know, as you complete a project, I understand that you you go in and adjust that one street, but how do we? Uh, how do, and, and I guess, I guess my, my I guess my concern is that. We had it done, I don't know, five years or so ago, and that's a snapshot in time, and then you have a bad winter and a lot of freeze and thaws, as uh, Councilman Dobler said, and a street that was maybe a, a 70 last year might be a, a 65 in, you know, in a year or something, but how often do we update that to know? Three years. Every three years? Every okay. three years. And do we do any sort of like trend analysis on like, hey, this one went from a 70 to a 60 in three years, so maybe... It needs now we have the system so now trends and whatever information the, the <coughs> community needs so we can generate so trend analysis will be done like right now so now we have a two, 2016 data available now 2019 so we have a trend now like it was uh, in 2016 it was 55 and now it is 65 and in 2019 <coughs> now when in 2022 towards the end when we do the next then you will have a trend where we are going actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And yeah. I guess just a just an editorial comment, uh, not really a question, but um, I know over the years I've I've had the fortune of working with a lot of your engineering staff, and some of the engineers that are no longer here. One of their big complaints was over the last few years they've spent all their time setting, updating stuff in the computer, and they can't be on a project, they can't be making decisions, they can't be managing projects is actively, I would sure hope if this if this program that you're in, uh, envisioning, if it's going to need daily data inputs or something like that, I would highly, I mean, you guys need to add some people to your staff, I guess, is my is my recommendation because you got way too few people doing way, way too much work. So, okay. Okay. That's my, okay. my opinion only. I would agree with that. Um, 
go back to a statement you made just a minute ago. How long ago was the average PCI 55? In 2016, it was 55. And it's it is now. by a 2015 data. Okay. It was 55. So, and, oh, oh, that's all I need there. Okay. Now what is it? Uh, now, in 2019, it was uh, 65. So we've made a huge increase yes. in, in that five-year period mm -hmm. uh, based on the fact that we have money to spend on, yeah. on, on the process. So even though sometimes it doesn't feel like we're making progress, but the reality is we are, and I know that's a combination of what engineering does with your projects and what the street department does with just routine maintenance. So we, we appreciate that. I think the, the ability to use data to figure out where we're at makes a lot of sense. We're going to talk about a couple of projects here at the end that we'd like to to uh, maybe see sped up a little bit. But uh, other than that, I think uh, I think a lot of progress is being made. So. Um, Council member, can I interject here? You bet. Um, what's happened from the twenty um, up to the twenty eighteen, and once we get to the twenty twenty one PCI index, you'll see a change just due to a lot of the bill and overlays that we've had to escalate up the curve okay and a lot of reconstructions that were not caught at that time okay so, so I, it's going to improve even more i feel that it'll improve at least three at least three points how, how about the ceiling program what's that called again or you just microservicing, microservicing. the microservicing yeah. is it going to be has, successful in the long it, term in the long term it's kicked out um it's going to be bid towards the end of the month um, what we try to do is we try to put out a, 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 a crack seal program at the end of the year because that's in the cold weather, that's when the, uh, the asphalt's the widest. And then that's when we kick out the microsurfacing the next following year to catch all those locations plus any others that had smaller than your or half inch separation. So the microsurfacing has needs to be evaluated and they will when they go through the PCI index. Okay. Great. I think the only other comment is, I know last year there was a couple of projects. The, the complaints I get in my district, uh, which really aren't many, but obviously they're mostly about streets. And a couple of segments where, um, you know, a, a clearly a block of, several blocks of street, a segment of streets um, was done, but only half of it. So in pretty bad shape, and then half of it got done. and. Uh, great for the people that live on this end of it, but not so great for the other people. And the, and the question is simply, why, why do you do that? And I know uh, a lot of the folks are gone now, but I think the, the answer I got was we ran out of money. And uh, a lot of it is you do run out of finances, but then all of a sudden it's the point of where do you start and where do you stop? Well, these are pretty simple. When you have and a dead-end <laughs> street at one yeah, end and, and a... And, and I know. agree, there's some that didn't make any sense. Yeah. But... Uh, I'd like to see us spend a little bit more time. The other one is there was a CIP project or a capital project on one side and a mill and overlay, and then in between there's 800 feet of just horrible street. And yeah. you know, those are the things that you can explain them. I can understand that, but well, the average person that hits the pothole in the middle just can't figure out what the city's doing. And I agree. And those some that when they get you get those complaints or we get the complaints, certainly we evaluate and then that way we can just fill them in. Since the guys are already on site, might as well knock it out. Yeah. And I'm just, just hoping that we can continue to look at the projects in totality and and try to avoid as many of those as possible. You can't ever avoid all of them, but uh, yeah, some certainly. of them are great. So overall, great, great job. We appreciate it. Uh, let's move on to items from staff. I think the first one is modifying existing sidewalk repair program. Um, I have asked if we could pull up a, uh, and it was my fault for not getting that popped in early enough for your guys' uh, packet, but uh, I think Ed might have handed them out if you did. Or? No, I haven't. Okay. We have some for your binder. Okay. And then we have some additional. Um, Can you hand it out now or are we talking? Okay. We could hit, is that okay if we yeah, hand Yeah, sure, just hand them out and be fine. Um, and then this way, Ed has been currently, in the previous pass, he's been running the 50-50 program, and, and I know when we had a previous personnel on staff, then 
there has been proposals of different scenarios of the 50-50 program, trying to make it more effective for both the homeowner and plus more uh, usage for the personnel time so we could save the taxpayers money of, of uh, the staff. And Ed has recreated an analysis of, of how um, we can show how much time we're putting on it now and then how much time we would save if we go to a different process. <clears throat> the secondary process would be try to, <clears throat> we'd come up with an engineer's estimate and then that way we would allow up to a certain amount um, as, as an equal value um, as a cost sharing program. The only reason I call it cost sharing is because it's not the 50-50 anymore. We're not splitting equal half-half. It would be the city would provide up to a certain limit. And then the, con the uh, homeowner would have the ability to go out and select any contractor that they prefer. And they would take the responsibility of getting it all accomplished. And I sometimes they pick, they don't know anyone, and will provide the list of licensed contractors and or they might have someone that they really recommend that they prefer and it could be someone that's extremely high but this is a, a value that the city would be a safe number that the city would be able to compensate um, so that's why it was compared to a cost sharing instead of a 50 50 because we're not literally splitting it down the middle but I will pass it on to Ed so he can pursue it. Yeah, my name's Ed Schrader. I'm with the inspection group for engineering. I've been dealing with sidewalks for probably 12 years now, and I think that's the number one complaint in the city. <laughs> <laughs> People just don't understand that they're responsible for their sidewalks, and they'll argue till they're blue in the face that the city should be fixing these sidewalks. But anyway... The 50-50 program was, I guess, our attempt to um, help with that. For a small budget item, $200,000, I bet we spend six to 800 man hours a year administering this thing. Uh, if, you, if you look at that one chart up there, I've got, I, I've anticipated, I mean, I went through and I counted all the staff members that are involved with each complaint. And we have over 100 a year, usually, that we deal with. I think last year it was 116, 120. So you that times six, you know, that's 600 man hours dealing with a $200,000 budget item. It just doesn't make sense and with the small staff that we have. And, you know, I, I went to Brian Faust originally, and, and I said, there's got to be a better way to administer this, still help the constituents, but not so much of our time. So I tried to, on, on that first chart there, I tried to list what happens in the 50, 50 sidewalk program now and then down below is what I proposed the new with the way the new program could work but if you turn to the other slide um, I had intended to look at that one first yeah the current program so if you look at those first 12 to 15 items there that's that's what's involved with our current 50-50 uh, program we we put it out for bids um, not knowing, we know what the budget is, but we don't know the quantities, we don't know the location, and we don't know the timing to tell the contractor. So the contractor's bidding on this $200,000 worth of sidewalks. We have a pre-con with them, and then we say, okay, now you wait. We, we wait for <laughs> people to ask to be on the program, and then we have to bid it, we have to send them letters, then we have to wait for them to send their checks back in, and usually we try to wait till we have eight or ten checks to uh, give the right of purchase order. And so that whole, we lose control of the whole timing and, and the constituents get mad at us because, like, if you sent yours in in April and nobody else has sent any checks in till June and we keep telling them, oh, we can't work on it yet, we've got to have ten before we can get going on it. And, and it's just a real bad customer service issue. The... Um, the contractors complain, we'll get a contractor one year and 
we've had some of them back out to get into it and they realize they can't make a dime in this thing because we're sending them to North Topeka and then to Southwest Topeka to replace one panel or uh, you know to the east side of town and you understand contractors they, they have three or four man crew and to do 30 square feet of sidewalk at four bucks a square foot they can't make any money doing that trip they can't pay their gas bill and so many of them they don't they don't bid it the next year they bid it because they don't know what they're getting into and then once they get into it they they back out of it and or don't bid it again we actually did have a contractor last year that backed out of it we had two and uh, I think the year before we had one back out too That's correct. once they realized what they're into so so anyway <laughs> Well, well you know, in the winter year. time, they get excited, mm -hmm. yeah. and they are all excited to get something lined up. So they bid, and then all of a sudden, when they get it, they go, "I really didn't want that, yeah. but I just turned in a bid." So the the, bottom, the, other, the other thing we also deal yeah. with too, right, is that these contractors, if they get the bid, and we're pushing them off, then they get real projects that come in, and they yes, start. right, they go for yes, the cream, correct. Yeah. And, and then that pushes ours even right. further down. There. Right. But contractually, we have an agreement that they are required to get it done within 30 days. And it's very hard to enforce, but we do have that agreement. And so we have some leverage to push on. It's just it's hard for a contractor to dance from one section to another when the complaint was for a panel or a two panel. And... If anyone's ever poured concrete, you just make no money. You can't even make, because by the time you move that truck from one stage to the next stage, you read that your mud's too hard to even lay down. So, and normally they're short loading it, so that's extra cost. So they can't even make fuel costs, they can't even make wages. So we're trying to propose something that helps both, yet provides the ability for the homeowner to say, okay, well then I'll take the responsibility of running this crew and then the city will provide once that invoice is turned in, homeowners turn that in and paid, they turn in their invoice, we pay up to a certain amount. Now if the value is less than what we have allowed, then we'll pay the half. But if it's more, then we pay up to a certain amount, and they're all handed that information, because this is what the engineer's estimate is what the city would allow to provide. Um, and we're not, we're not shorting, we're being conservative. So, because I wanna make sure that the contractors and the homeowners have the ability to utilize this service, but if they are totally unavailable to be able to support any, even half or less than half of their sidewalk, then they need to, just like previously, they need to go to a different funding source to try to help them out. What's the amount you'll fund up to? Um, we have up to $100,000 the city provides. I mean, per project, per? Well, we've, we've went from different variations of, of, Sometimes I've had some $240 ones. There's some that will literally have a full stretch of their block. Um, so it, it variations so much, and we try to take one and conglomerate and create a, about a 10 PO, 10 location PO, so it makes it more viable for that contractor. Um, but sometimes it's hard to, and you'll go and dance citywide. Yeah. So, and then normally what happens is, okay, you'll get an interested party, and you have a hard party keeping up, and then it spends, it's Ed's group that, which really needs to spend a lot of man hours to keep track of this. And, and we're just trying to utilize the ability to save city funds of man hours and then the liability on the um, resident in lieu of the previous one that Brian had come up with. He tried to propose one. We ran it through Mary, and then that would create a contractual agreement individually between every homeowner and the project. Well, then running a contract through per individual owner, 
by the time it would ever come through, then I don't know what would yeah. happen. So we're trying to make it a quicker process. <coughs> we're trying to kick it out the door. We're trying to make time. This proposal, uh, like Mark said, can reduce the time of getting them replaced. But what it also does is potentially can save a lot of money to the individual residents because as long as they can meet the inspecting requirements, right. then they can have anybody pour the concrete. You know, so maybe you have a friend that's in the concrete business could pour it for you, and they could save a, a whole lot of money in that aspect. Yeah. And so this is kind of threefold: city re reduction in cost, reduction in cost for the individual residents, and then speed up the process of getting those sidewalks replaced. Yeah. Well said. Good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. Question from the committee. Councilman Lesser. No. Nah. Emerson. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, Mr. Schrader, I know this is a, uh, I know this is a tough one. I was just doing some calculation. It looks like it takes like 25 linear feet of four foot sidewalk to get a yard of concrete. Mm -hmm. Now, for those who don't know, if you call and order a yard of concrete, they charge you for two yards. Exactly. And it used yeah. to be if we ordered three yards or more, there was no short load charge. Right. Now you've got to order four yards or you get that. Right. So, uh, and, and as, as Mr. Schreiner indicated, even if you have enough to get four or five yards, you can't drive a truck, a concrete truck, you know, 10 different places and that concrete's going to be set up by the yeah. time you do right. it. Um, right. and, and I know I'm, you guys are talking process, I'm thinking of the construction process here. I know you guys are really talking about the internal process, but I guess one question that came up, does the city of Topeka, would they allow precast concrete panels for sidewalks? We've never thought of that, but precast normally is more expensive than cast in place. And if you can come up with a precast that's less, then I'll certainly listen. Yeah, I think with these quantities, because again, you're getting into the problem of you can't call and get a quarter yard, or you exactly. can, but exactly. you're going to pay $200 for yeah. it. It'll be more than the, the panel would be. Right. Exactly, and we've even, you know, I've, I've told a gentleman that say, hey, if you go see a panel or two panels and you happen to see a chip on item and panel number three, there's a chance that we could evaluate to try to see if we can help cover that situation because it, I try to protect both the contractors and i got to protect the city and plus protect our <coughs> department. So the whole idea is, is it's, we're kind of in the, in the middle but I want to utilize the city funds to sure. the best ability. Sure. I guess I'm for anything that makes it more efficient and yeah. and doesn't require as much of your time. I guess I, I need to think. This is the first time I've seen the mm -hmm. yeah. information. I need to personally think about it a little more. But Sorry I didn't have any pretty pictures with this like all the other. <laughs> yeah. I think the other consideration <laughs> we have to look at, uh, council members, is the uh, low and, and the LMI neighborhoods. And those are where a lot of the sidewalks that need repair are at. And those individuals, a lot of them don't have the uh, resources mm -hmm. to make those improvements. So um, I, I think this is a, is a very good start in how we retool this program. But I think the next step that we really have to look at, and speaking with uh, Monique Laude about this, was that um, you know, we're losing some of those resources to help those individuals replace the sidewalks. And so we need to uh, eventually down the road look at how we address the sidewalk issues in those neighborhoods. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and added to that, um, in those areas where we're doing some of these sort projects and fixing sidewalks, the next block over, there might be a complaint, and then those people start feeling cheated because, hey, how come they got new sidewalks over here, but now I got to pay for my sidewalk? And you just hear that all the time. <laughs> and as you can understand, sidewalks is a never ending process. But uh, we, we're getting to, and, and you understand, is we're getting late in the season. Construction only lasts nine months. We got to kick this out the door. I can't pour concrete 35 and rising. I can't pour it on frozen concrete or frozen ground. We can cover it. We can do a lot of things. But the thing about it is, we need to make sure currently we need to make sure that their check comes in. They still have the right 
to by the time we build that PO to say, I ain't got any funds in there, let's pull it. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get the people out there fast enough and let the responsibility on to the homeowner to say, with the contractor, this is the grade work I prefer to do. You know, let's, let's get this grade right before we finally approve it and we'll pay our amount that the, the estimate is. It's, so, it's not a consideration of not paying. Yeah. It's just trying to save and utilize the value of our time. Are you saying that we're not doing any projects right now in lieu of approval Currently of this? we have four on, okay. on the Under books. the old process. Under the old process. Okay. Are you and accepting I'd, new I'd love complaints? To I'd, we have calls in and they're on hold. I'd love to kick it out. Um, I'd love to kick something out. You know, uh, this I, is one of those things that no matter what you propose, we could sit here and ask questions all day long. Mm -hmm. There, there's no perfect process. I guess I kind of lean towards let's try something. If it doesn't work, uh, we can always change it. You know, doesn't doesn't mean it's gonna doesn't mean it's set in concrete. Like, right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and I agree with the pun. That's a cool one. But uh, the thing about it is, yes, um, Atchison tried this same concept. Mm -hmm. We've we've looked at multi variety communities. And Atchison last a year, and they dumped it because they didn't have enough people get on board. Okay. Um, we've had other entities that have tried different techniques, like Emporia. So it's it, we're trying to find a balance somewhere. And the only balance we have currently is we put out RFPs for under 50s, and then we have contractors turn in, and we select the low bid, and then we create packages. But by the time that gets out, that's six to eight weeks down the line before I can ever start building packages for someone. And this... we've already been working on a media piece for this okay. in conjunction. Uh, it's been a, a dual process. So uh, Molly Hatfield will have a piece. Once we decide on what this looks like, we're going to do a big media push on it. And so we've been working in conjunction with uh, Mark and his staff on what that's going to look like. Are we spending the full amount of money every year? Does it roll over? How Last that year we didn't. Okay. We got eaten pretty hard because so just, of the COVID issue. Right, I understand that. But typically, uh, do we spend the money? Or typically, it, we are pretty successful at burning all the funds. Okay, great. And if we're okay. not, that's when we'll stretch to another panel. Um, the trouble is we have, we can only go to the property line. And the next guy that didn't call in a complaint, he's totally out of compliance. But I don't have the right to get on his property. his yeah. property because he hasn't made the complaint. But then once that's down, he'll probably then call in and turn in a service request. I guess I would suggest maybe to the committee that we we think about approving this process if that's what you're looking for. Maybe just by consensus, or we can take a vote. Doesn't matter. Um, so you can get started, and then if it doesn't work, we expect to. Look at another process or tweak it or whatever it takes. But I think it would be great if you'd allow us to do All that. right. Uh, I guess I'd look for a motion. So moved. Second. All right. We uh, have a motion, a second, to approve the uh, SOP that was presented today. All Thanks. those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, uh, motion passes. So let's see what happens. Excellent. Chair, I guess yes. just a clarification. I this isn't really a council thing anyway, is it? Just kind of our, because uh, it's really yeah, an internal. It is a committee direction, and that's, okay. I think, the charge that we have. We we simply wanted to get, we need this feedback in order for us okay. to feel comfortable with the direction that we're going. And then we'll report back after a season of trying it this way and see whether we've made any headway or not in, Great. in improving our process. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, Moving on to item eight, uh, we have items from the committee. First one on here is Urish Road 21st to 29th. That's actually something I'd ask to be placed on the agenda. Uh, not in my district, but I get complaints from uh, folks in my district that have to uh, drive that every day because it's just, just the uh, next district north, which happens to be uh, Councilman Duncan's district. Um, and, and I think we understand the the issue, One, our Urish Road has been improved from 
gosh, Huntoon, I think south, most of that by the county. We're down to the last piece that's actually a city project. Uh, it's scheduled for a couple, three years out, uh, widening, and that'll be great when that happens. Uh, the road right now is in horrible condition. Um, and I think what we talked about was potential of just a mill and overlay if funding was available. Uh, so that's why it's on the agenda, I guess, uh, basically just to ask that question, if there's any potential of getting that project completed this year, a, a mill and overlay. So, um, Yeah. Um, I had sent an email to Brent and, and everyone informing that um, – I was went through and found out that I have some available funding sources in the 2020 that uh, I decided to jump the gun and we're around 65% design already on it. Great. And um, with the funds available um, and hopefully there's not a horrible amount of full depth concrete <laughs> replacement, um, we can do this project. Okay. And I'd like to get it done this year. Great. Um, that would be a mill and overlay from 21st, 29th. That means it would be a full closure. Um, so I know there will be complaints. Right. But, but there is access for. How long? Um, Predicted. I don't see anything less than a month. You'd probably, you'd probably split it between like 25th or something. So. Yeah, it'd be nice if I could. Actually, I'd be nice if I could have the whole thing. Right. Um, but the th <laughs> then I could really knock it out. Yeah. But the thing about it is, um, I don't want to start till after the Fourth of July issue, uh, because then it'll turn. We'll get bullets flying everywhere. Right. Um, but the thing about it is, it'd be nice. I, I we're doing it in house, and then we'll kick it out the door that way. Right. Um, but utilizing. The remaining of 2020, 22, or 2020, um, and items that we were successful enough to get lower bids, and consultants that didn't utilize all their funds. That was a benefit to our services. So um, that way I could try to utilize the maximum of those funds, and we could get that project complete. And I assume coordination with Shawnee County on the golf course as well as I think there's a lot of rest home in there. Yeah, they're past. Okay. They're past those stages. Good. So that's where you got to the concrete stoppage. So we would start from there up to the rest home. Okay, good. And uh, I've cored it. I got uh, good cores, six layers. I got a good subgrade in there. And then if I need to do a little edge milling for some safety, we can get her done. Okay, appreciate that. And I assume that would allow us to push the CIP project um, maybe off a year. It seemed like it was pushed out a year. And, and yeah, we have it currently scheduled for 26, I believe. Correct. And so it might be 27 now. Um, I don't know what exactly. Well, we, if we would have done it, it in, I'm sorry. Go ahead. If we would have done it in 2022, that would have bumped us to 2025 for full reconstruction. Um, if I can do it this year, then that's a little bit of benefit, but there's a lot of other scenarios that come into play of other overlays that might want to be brought into the game once this gets accomplished. You know, it'd be nice to get that, that whole section of Urish complete, but my, my gut feel is traffic is is such that once we get a decent pavement, uh, people are going to be pretty happy. Right now, it's dodging the potholes and trying yeah. not to get into the oncoming lane. It makes it difficult. So, question? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, I, I, I fully support uh, doing that, and I appreciate um, you jumping the gun to, to work on that. Uh, I, I guess I did have a question. You mentioned if you could shut it all down. Other than needing to, you know, keep access to the golf course, if it would save a significant amount of money and time, why can't we shut it all the way down? And when you go to repave it, you're going to have it shut down for a year, and no one thinks anything of it. If you talk to anyone in the street department or anyone that does street reconstruction, we want to shut everything down. <laughs> um, 
Because it, it does, you get a better price um, because you're going to have a lot higher cost for your detour. Your traffic control is going to eat you alive. Um, and then I will get a better product if I could just get on there, full run, mill and go from one end to the other. But there will be some full depth patching. We're going to have to pull it all off and then we'll have some mill, uh, full depth patching locations. There could be a soft spot in, in where we have that drainage ditch. But we can take care of that. So, so just to be clear, you're 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 planning to shut it completely down to do it. Is that right? Or you're saying my you can't. theory is I want to shut the whole thing down. And I'm I'm 100 percent in favor of that. Just so you understand, I'm I'm not. I'm saying absolutely. Let's shut it down all the way. Get it done quicker, cheaper. If we shut half of it down, then we're starting to transfer traffic through the residential sections. People are going to take their own route anyhow. Right. And I don't want to help. Cause more chaos for you. Um, That's okay. It's uh, Councilman Duncan's area. Okay. Yeah. Well then, I'm sorry, Mr. Duncan. Yeah, we'll <laughs> Dang it! Didn't see he was on here. We'll get to him in just a just a second. So you, you could shut it all down and still keep the golf course. That is correct. Open. Fantastic. That is correct. That's um, the way to do it, I think. And then also in the the um, retirement community. Right. All right. Uh, I'll go to Councilman Lesser if he has any questions. If not, we'll bring on Councilman Dunk. I don't. Everything I had was has been answered, so thank you. Great. Thank you. Councilman Dunk. To the chair, um, just a couple quick things. Obviously, some members of staff will tell you I've been harassing about this for a while now, so I'm very appreciative it's being discussed. Um, it sounds like we are going to be able to do that this summer and I'll tell you that's what I am absolutely advocating for um, and I know yes we will get some complaints from a few people that it's closed down completely but I promise you they do not outweigh by any measure the number of people who will be very happy that we are addressing this road even if it's closed for a month particularly from the aspect that it's it can't be addressed again for for that four-year window um, as most of you know on staff, that road isn't just, it's not just because it's ugly and we don't like it, it's becoming a hazard. I mean, there, there's a true public safety issue here. And I am concerned about what happens if we go a whole nother winter, even though we would do it next summer, what's gonna continue to happen to that road. So, so it, <clears throat> excuse me. So I will just say as the representative from that district, uh, the citizens over there who travel it, not just in my district, but who live in the adjoining districts, potentially Councilman Dobbler's and and less because they're, they're going to appreciate it and, and understand what we're trying to do. And I will work hard to make sure they understand what we're trying to do uh, best I can. Councilman, that's very much appreciated because you get all the complaints. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's all right. I'll make sure when they like it, I'll take as much credit as possible. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's the way it works. Well, we, we appreciate the question. Oh, yeah. Well, just a let me let me put one more road in your uh, and I I can tell you in, in I think in five years of doing this now I've only brought up well two roads 37th and then California California got done a few years ago uh, and it'll be reconstructed 37th you're going to do a little couple but Adam Street which mostly this is in uh, Deputy Mayor's district uh, Adam Street from 37th to 45th next year that's going to be probably carrying the the majority of traffic for the California Street detour. Correct. It's the only way for thousands of people to get out of uh, Southboro, and it needs a mill and overlay. It's it's also really really bad. Um, and j just as if as Urish will let you put off a complete reconstruction with curb and gutter and, and storm sewers for for several years, it would do the same on Adams Street. Um, that really 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 needs a mill and overlay this year, if at all possible, if there's some way to do that. 37th to 45th. If you could please wait until I see how much is remaining out of that 2020 available funds. Sure, sure. Thank you. All right. Again, we appreciate the response. I think that's, uh, that's going to make a lot of people happy. Thanks to uh, Councilman Duncan for continuing to, to uh, push this issue. Uh, he gets more complaints than I do. So he'll get more credit than I will. But... Uh, that's the way it works. All right, uh, we do have another uh, potential project we'd like to, I guess, discuss and get an update on. 
Um, 17th and Wanamaker, 17th from Wanamaker to I-470. And uh, Councilman Lesser, I think uh, this is in his district, and he'd ask, uh, ask for discussion on this. So, Councilman? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to get uh, kind of an update of what the plan is in regards to the condition. We, we um, did a really good job, um, I think, with the year before last, um, where we had a lot of safety issues, deterioration condition issues, and did a mill and overlay from Fairlawn um, on 17th over to, to the I-470 uh, bridge. Um, but then we had to stop there because then we go on the other side and we have concrete um, that's failing. Um, I, uh, I get a, a call on this or an email on this just about weekly. Um, I was able to, um, a lot of them, you know, um, the normal, hey, the potholes, uh, I hit, you know, I hit, uh, hit a pothole, ruined my tire. I am able now um, to actually give a real life condition of why, you know, where the city doesn't pay for tires and such in those conditions because my daughter actually blew her tire in, in <laughs> on one of them. So I bit the, had the bike bullet and take care of that. But um, recently um, I had, you know, I'm not a motorcycle rider, so I had not gotten, uh, I, I don't have that perspective. But I had gotten a couple calls from motorcycle riders of the safety of some of the depth of some of the whole foot bottles and stuff from a safety aspect of, um, you know, having to try to avoid those and oncoming traffic and stuff. So um, I, I, I wanted to get an update, see what your thoughts were um, on regards to that, that little stretch there. Um, and, and I didn't, you know, the other thing that brought it back up, um, Mr. Chair uh, and I were talking about a video. I can't remember who it was, but did a, it was an overhead drone photo of, of different things. And and then I kind of had the overhead perspective, um, and it looked like Afghanistan and roadside bombs had gone off on that little stretch. You know, when you looked at it from from the overhead. So that's kind of what I wanted to know. Um, is an update? What any you guys are thinking? Any proposals? Um, and bring us kind of up to speed on what your thoughts are there. Mm -hmm. um, I have Robert Bidwell here to sure. discuss that, please. Thank you. This thing on. Yeah, now on. Um, we we currently have that stretch of 17th under design for reconstruction next year, uh, from from Lawmaker to 470. Um, so not only 17th but also Westport from 17th where it wraps around to the north to Wanamaker. Those two stretches will be reconstructed next year. Okay, so that project will start uh, March or April next year? Yeah, we're Most planning likely. on a yeah, early early lighting and okay. in the calendar year. Okay, any thoughts on uh, what to do between now and then? A lot of pothole, pothole slash month uh, units in that. <laughs> Yeah, with all that joining that's just deteriorating and that, we'll just we'll continue patching it. I know we don't get out there probably every day and do that, but we will make it a habit of getting out there more frequently and getting them addressed. It is very bad, and I've seen the same uh, video that Mr. Lesser had seen, and it doesn't look very good from there. So, um, But we will continue addressing that and try to keep it up the best we can until this project. Tony, let me ask, are there areas where we can actually go in and trench uh, do uh, the four-inch job, uh, the four-foot cuts, uh, so that we uh, clear a large section of potholes and at least give us some relief uh, until we get into the reconstruction? We looked at that um, last year, but every one of them joints are just, they're just so deteriorated that you'd have to do every concrete joint that's in there. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you'd have to go from 470 Bridge all the way to Wanamaker. Wow. Um, it's, and it's pretty bad when you use a leaf blower to blow out the holes to patch it, and the concrete just keeps peeling off. So, wow. um, I just, I think for if they're going to reconstruct it next year, I mean, I don't think it's much.
money ahead to go in and take out all that joining all the way to Wanamaker. Mm -hmm. um, so we can continue patching it the best we can. Okay. Um, that's, I just hate to throw money in there to, to do the joining if we're going to tear it all out next year. Yeah, at this point, triage. Right. You got another 10 months with triage until we get there. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm good with that. I think that would probably be the only thing that I would ask. And I, and I appreciate your your candor in in in, in say, seeing the same thing that I see. And I, I think maybe it's just one of those things that, yeah, certainly, you know, going out every day is not 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 reasonable. But um, yeah, if, if it could be kind of where we maybe just had a schedule where we went and checked, you know what I mean? Um, um, because, like I said, I, uh, I think we we do deal with some safety issues because when it does get bad, people are swerving around, you know, and and then a motorcycle is going to do a header if 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 if, if something deteriorates real quick and we haven't had a chance to get out there. So you're on it. I, I appreciate. Um, um, I think what you're saying makes sense. Um, that would probably be the only thing I may I ask is you know maybe a, you know hate to say it, but man, but maybe a weekly inspection, bi-weekly inspection, um, you know, you know that better than I do what you think you, how quickly it could deteriorate once certain repairs are done. But, um, um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. And that's what Todd and I just was talking. We'll just set up a weekly work order that once a week we will for sure run that area and, and keep it patched up. Thank you. Thank you, councilman. Just a side note, uh, the public works director over at the county, Kurt Niehaus, and I designed that stretch of 17th Street uh, 33 years ago. So it, that explains most of it. Yeah, I was going to say, you can blame me, but really, really what it points out is uh, those streets do have a design life, and uh, that certainly showed up. And it also makes me feel uh, not any younger for some reason. I, I didn't say old, Mark. That, All right. That was under my tongue. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to uh, item B, item 8B, the uh, firm unplanned repair expenses update. Anna. Um, thank you. So going through the firm program uh, a couple months ago now, we committed if we had any occurrences that we had to dip into that bucket of unplanned expenses that we would report back to this committee as um, soon as we could with the updated information. So since our last meeting, we've had two events happen. Um, one, we gave a brief update and kind of prefaced um, with the holiday sewer line or water main break, um, not water main, excuse me, water leak. Turns out it wasn't the water line. Um, and the status update is what we have on that. The second item is the fire station number seven ceiling. So with project Number one, the holiday building water line replacement. The net expense to the firm budget uh, was approximately 41000 This was one that had an active, very large leak outside of this building and had to be immediately addressed. It is one where we leveraged the funds that we had available to take a more proactive approach and definitely fix um, problems versus trying to band-aid and come back later for increased expenses. So once we excavated the site and had a chance to look at both the fire line, which turned out to be the actual issue, as well as the water line coming out of the building, um, we determined that the best use of the city's funds would be to replace both while we had already tore up the concrete, dug out the trenches, and had staff on site. Um, so we replaced both out all the way through and with a net total of 41000 for that expense. Any questions on that one? No. Nope. Makes sense. So the second instance we've had is still um, in process in terms of our total mitigation efforts. We had, as all of you are very well aware, um, a ceiling collapse at Fire Station 7. So with this, we did have our maintenance staff on site. Once we were notified that there was sagging in the ceiling, it was an old plaster ceiling that was original to the build. Um, this particular station was built in the 1930s, so it's a very old ceiling. Um, once it has collapsed, we had staff in immediately and over the weekend to mitigate it so that we could maintain living quarters for the firemen um, over that weekend. So we have currently temporary um, drywall up on the ceiling so that it is a usable space, but it is not permanently fixed. 
So we're still working with the contractor to go through and verify the remainder of the plaster ceilings within that facility as well as identify other stations that have potential issues as they were built about the same time in the same type of ceiling to make sure that we don't um, have this exact same issue happen again with the um, plaster ceilings being too heavy with the nails being short and a combination of water damage that um, likely contributed to it. So currently to date we've spent uh, approximately $8,000. This does not include the extra mitigation efforts in terms of verifying the balance of the ceilings or um, permanently replacing out that ceiling to maintain the integrity of it. So this was the 8,000 was the emergency fix to get it livable again. Great. And what's our, uh, what's our budget again, total budget for unexpected repairs? You probably said that at the beginning, but. The total that this committee has approved at this point is I believe 200 or 250. Um, okay. The total that we've built into our program is closer to the 350, 400 mark. But given the large scale and the newness of this program, wanted to you know gain approval for a smaller amount. Um, these are the only two items we've had to date that has hit this line. So it'll be approximately 50,000 likely to increase. Um, my guess would be around the 70 mark, give yeah. or take, depending on the direction we go with the ceiling. Uh, as we get closer to the 100 to 150, I will likely be coming back to this committee presenting what we've had and our plan forward in terms of um, additional funding requests. Very good. All right, thank you. Uh, questions from the committee? Councilman Lesser. Just wanted to introduce my daughter who was in the uh, Pavel incident coming here to get the Mother's Day money. Uh, <laughs> to go, do, go shopping. Um, I do that partially for Tony Emerson's sake because I know he will forget his Mother's Day. And, Thank you. And so I don't have anything. All right. Thank you. Um, any other items from the committee? Uh, I notice we have. Councilwoman Ortiz, uh, any any questions or comments? If not, anything else from the staff? Thank you. Oh, go ahead. Difficulty. Hello. Uh, yeah. I'm try again, Council. Why we go ahead. <laughs> I don't believe we're. I don't understand why we didn't insulate the fire station when we had Cora. I apologize, Councilwoman. I believe you're breaking up, but I think I know the question you're asking. Um, mm -hmm. There was a question about the insulation on replacement of that ceiling tile um, or the drywall that we put up. We are going in and reinstalling installation. Um, we left it without it so that we could verify with the wet weather that there was no remaining leaks so that we didn't get that insulation wet if there were leaks in fact happening within that building still. Um, we have since verified that there is not a current active leak within that roof. We've um, made the necessary repairs and that we continue to uh, monitor it just to ensure as we make our long-term plan that we don't have any other issues come up, but we didn't want to cause an additional issue um, with water getting into something that definitely should not be wet unless um, we were for sure not going to do that. Great. Does that answer, uh, answer the Thank question? Thank you. All right. If there's nothing else, I think we are complete and uh, ahead of time. Awesome. Fantastic. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know.